At last. I must say I'm disappointed in your progress. I imagined you'd be here sooner. Hey YouTube. So it's finally happening. Soul Reaver 1 and 2 remasters are on the way. And as a huge Legacy of Kane fan, I'm super excited. Can't wait. So to celebrate, I thought I'd do some more invasions with Raziel. So this is rune level 200. I've got 80 int 50 dex. I've got the Starline Sword and Keen Infused Beast Claws with Lifesteal Fist. And the way that's set up, that is a guaranteed one shot. As you can see here, so that was 1900 HP from both the Phantom and the Host. And I'll explain that setup in, uh, in a little bit. Now this next invasion, so in the bottom right you can see there's a Phantom fighting Red. And that Red just gets sniped there by the Host who's up on the roof. So try and take out the Host, don't quite manage it. They now know where I am, so they go on a bit of a prop hunt, so I do hide in a bush for a little bit until they give up. And they go back to uh, their little trick. So we now have, in a second you're going to see the Phantom is fighting another red. There's the host on the roof, and the HP bar of the red will come up now. And uh, there you are, you can see that's nearly 1800 HP, one shot. So uh, I think it's time to teach the host a lesson. So the way the Lifesteal Fist setup works, uh, if you buff your claws or fists with Scholar's Armament, and then if you have the Shard of Alexander and the Dagger Talisman, which both boost Lifesteal Fist, and got the Magic Tear and the Physic as well, uh, that is a guaranteed one shot if you can land it. So you do have to time it right, especially if you don't have much poise. But as you're about to see here, this host is gonna learn a valuable life lesson, which is uh, if you're gonna be sneaky, make sure you don't uh, invite a sneaky invader <laughs> into your world so there he goes and he gets the clap as well uh, so the rest of the build i've got a graven mass talisman to boost the sorceries and i'm using the carrion regal scepter and i've got the filled finger trick mirror as well so uh, i look blue now the soul reaver games uh if you haven't played them before uh, the best way to describe soul reaver it's like a cross between dark souls a uh, tomb raider uh, Zelda Link to the Past and a Metroidvania. So it's got that decaying world vibe that Dark Souls has got. It's got a huge interconnected map as well. A lot like Dark Souls 1. So you'll go off, you know, exploring and all of a sudden you end up in uh, an area, you know, near the start of the game. So it's really impressive what they were able to do on a PlayStation 1. Um, the voice acting is incredible. So that's one thing that the Legacy of Kane series is really known for. They hired a bunch of theatre actors to do um, all, all the voice work, which was quite a new thing at the time. And it's held up really well to this day. So even if the gameplay necessarily hasn't held up too well, just the you know the characters and the stories and the voice acting, it's just you know, stellar. Uh, you've also got the Blood Omen games 1 and 2. So they're told from the perspective of Kane, who is the main protagonist of the series. So the setup is, he is a nobleman who was turned into a vampire at the start of um, Blood Omen 1. And then Soul Reaver is told from the perspective of Raziel, who becomes one of Kane's lieutenants. All you know at the start of um, Soul Reaver 1 is Kane decides to punish Raziel because Raziel has evolved and uh, grown a, a set of wings. And apparently Kane is jealous. But as you'll see later on in the games, uh, Kane is playing a very, very long game against a uh, hidden enemy. So the story is absolutely uh, superb. You've got a lot of environmental puzzles as well, uh, a lot like Tomb Raider. Um, you then have the kind of Metroidvania aspect as well. So there's areas that you can only open up uh, by acquiring abilities later in the game. It's also got the Dark World mechanic from Zelda Link to the Past. So you can switch from what's known as the physical realm, which is the real world, to the spectral realm, uh, which is full of wraiths. And the map layout will change slightly, so there's areas that you can only access or puzzles you can only solve um, in the spectral realm, and then you have to move back. So seriously impressive. So yeah, um, I love the games. Really recommend checking out the remasters when they land. So I will definitely be streaming them when they come out. And I'm going to do something with Blood Omen 1 and 2 as well into the run-up to the launch. So might be a let's play, might be a stream, uh, we'll see. But I hope you join me for that. And after I've finished Soul Reaver 1 and 2, I'll do Defiance as well. So that's a quick summary of the Legacy of Kane games. Hope you enjoy the rest of the invasions. If you do and you want to leave me a like or a follow, that'll be awesome. And I will leave you with some of the fantastic voice acting from Soul Reaver 2. Cheers.
at last. I must say I'm disappointed in your progress. I imagined you'd be here sooner. Tell me, did it trouble you to murder your brothers? Did it trouble you when you ordered me into the abyss? <laughs> Eternity is relentless, Raziel. When I first stole into this chamber centuries ago, I did not fathom the true power of knowledge. To know the future, Raziel. To see its paths and streams tracing out into the infinite. As a man, I could never contain such forbidden truths. But each of us is so much more than we once were. Do you not feel with all your soul how we have become? like gods. As such, are we not indivisible? As long as a single one of us stands, we are legion. Our futures are predestined. Mobius foretold mine eons ago. We each play out the parts fate has written for us. Free will is an illusion. I found the tomb of Saravan King. How could you profane a priest by turning him into a vampire? How could I not? One must keep his friends close, Raziel. And his enemies even closer. Who better to serve me than those whose passion transcends all notions of good and evil? The Seraphim were saves, defending Nazgul from the corruption that we represent. My eyes are open, Cain. I find no nobility in the unlife you rudely forced on my unwilling corpse. You may have uncovered your past, but you know nothing of it. You think the Seraphim were noble, altruistic? Their agenda was the same as ours.